Welcome to our Five on Five. Please welcome back Congressman Greg Weldon. Congressman, good to see you. Greg, good to be with you. Thanks for being here. So you met with the Medford Easter Seals earlier today, mm -hmm. a group working to combat homelessness among veterans. What can you do in Congress to help that organization? Well, a couple of things. First of all, they do a great work on the ground. They're actually helping homeless veterans not only get living capability, but also a job. And they're taking on some of the toughest cases. And they're getting about a 60% success rate where they take, let's say, about 97 veterans, about 58 of those, they've been able to get employment. They've gotten funding from the federal government before. I'm leading a, an effort, a bipartisan effort, to make sure that that funding stream continues because this is a program that gets results for the men and women who have worn our nation's uniform and fought for our freedom and, and some of the toughest cases we have in our communities. And they have a great track record here in, in the Rogue Valley in both Jackson and Josephine counties helping get these veterans many cases literally off the streets and into housing and into jobs. Okay, you also spoke at Medford Rotary earlier today and announced support for a proposal in the House that would help maintain critical emergency medical services in Oregon and nationwide. Tell us why this is so important. Well, is there this, a gap here? Yeah, there is. And it's a reinterpretation of the law and a law that hasn't kept up with modern medicine. When um, you call for emergency services, the ambulance shows up. Um, prior to some recent decisions, uh, that EMT could understanding orders from a doctor, which they all had, administer life-saving drugs. Um, now, uh, there's been a review, and they say, no, actually, we don't think you can do that anymore as an EMT. Hmm. You're gonna have to have a physician oversee it and all. Well, we've been doing it this way for a long time. So whether it's morphine or one of the other narcotics, something that'll save a life, stop a seizure, They've been able to do this. Now, all of a sudden, the government's reinterpreted it, said, no, we don't think that's going to go along. And the DEA says, no, we're going to specifically prevent that from happening. So as a result, we're going to, our EMTs that arrive to save your life are going to lose the ability to do that because they won't be able to administer these life-saving drugs in many cases. So we're lead, helping lead. We're backing a bipartisan effort that will come through the Energy and Commerce Committee, of which I'm a member, uh, to restore that, clarify that, make sure that um, you can have standing doctor's orders. We've heard from uh, physicians, emergency room uh, folks, uh, doctors, um, EMTs all over the district, literally from Sherman County, Wasco County, here in Jackson County, there's been a big effort to say, we gotta, we got to fix this, and it takes an act of Congress to fix this. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Much more in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Congressman Greg Walden. Congressman, the, the House bill that you're behind has uh, to save uh, the TSA, get them back into Klamath, oh, yes. if you will, uh, is now out of the committee. Does yep. that mean you think this is going to be moving? Yeah, I feel very good about it. Um, we were able to uh, put together a bill that got unanimous support out of the Homeland Security Committee, uh, which means it should come to the floor soon, uh, in the next few weeks, I hope and uh, should get good, strong support there. Senators have been working this, Senator Merkley has over in the mm -hmm. Senate on some companion legislation. So we hope somewhere in the process, one of these efforts will get all the way through. Look, it makes no sense from a security standpoint or an economic standpoint to put people on a plane in Klamath Falls, fly them all the way to Portland, and then screen them. Are you kidding me? I mean, that, that's like saying you're gonna leave the East Coast and fly to Ohio, and there's nothing in between to worry about. If terrorists wanted to do damage, wouldn't you board the plane in Klamath Falls then? I mean, this is so stupid on, on the TSA Washington leadership part not to fix this. But we're going to come and do it legislatively. Klamath isn't the only airport affected. I want them to get air service. It'll be good for their economy. It's really important to Kingsley uh, for the pilots that come in and out of there to train. So we've got to have this component there. Or someday you could risk a, 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 a reduction in the uh, uh, air training at Kingsley. Because, you know, somebody somewhere else wants those jobs and they'll mm. say, well, you can't even get in and out of there. Well, we got to have commercial air service. Penn Air is willing to provide it. We need to fix the TSA part so they can and we can get good security. So we're going to get this done. Okay, what about H.R. 6, the 21st Century Cures Act is something you're on to. Uh, why are new potential life-saving drugs being held up? You know, there are a lot of reasons um, and you have a lot of issues involving people with... Uh, uh, sometimes diseases that very few humans have, maybe 10,000 people. Uh, and so you have these, these drugs that could help them, but there's no financial incentive for the drug makers to uh, proceed through all the testing and all to get them out there. So we, we're trying to address that issue for people with really unique diseases where you could possibly come up with, with a drug that would help them, uh, but you can't now. I mean, they just won't do it. 
And so we're trying to find an incentive process that will work, just as we're trying to find how to bring more of these drugs to market uh, and deal with the cost of drugs too, which is always a hard issue to, to uh, get your hands around. But we think that if you can find the, put the money in the research through National Institutes of Health, that's where we can have a public-private partnership that can move forward and help find cures to things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, diabetes. And, and so what the thrust of the legislation is, is really twofold. Streamline the approval process while maintaining safety of drugs, but also have a guaranteed funding stream to the National Institute of Health so that they can do the research. Now, some of those funds will find their way out to places like OHSU, Oregon Health Sciences University in Portland, where they do magnificent research on cancer and other issues. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just stay at NIH, it comes out in partnership. And, and if we can incent our researchers to find cures, that can help in our biggest cost to the federal government long term, which is health care costs. And so we're, we're trying to figure out how do we improve people's lives? How do we deal with these uh, orphan drugs and these diseases where you could probably get a drug off label that would work, but they just, it doesn't pencil out. Uh, and so the, the bill is pretty complicated, but it's gotten big bipartisan support. I think we had 340 votes for it in the House. That's huge. Uh, Chairman Upton from Michigan is uh, working with the Senate. Um, I've talked to Senator McConnell and others about trying to move this forward. Um, and Lamar Alexander is uh, taking the lead on that in the Senate. He's from Tennessee. And so I think we're seeing some movement now uh, to get this off dead center and going forward between the two chambers. And what about, you, you mentioned costs. There, yeah. there, are, there are literally life-saving drugs for, for hepatitis C that cost tens of thousands of dollars. People cannot afford that. Right. Is, is there a responsibility on Congress to step in and try and control You know, these are, these are issues where we need public pressure on, on the drug makers to say, is that really a reasonable cost? Is there not some way you can bring that down? Um, it, it, is, um, it is a real frustration. I know the insurance companies always want to push down those prices. That's where if you have a competitive market out there on the insurance side, they can help put pressure. Uh, in some cases, the drug companies make those drugs available. At, I'm not sure on that one, mm -hmm. but on many through a, a program where they actually, if you can't afford it and, and don't have access to coverage, they will either decrease the price or make them available at, at no cost. There's some limited programs there. We've helped people get on in the past. But it's really, a, it, it's really a problem for people who, who could have their lives improved or saved. But if you're spending 10000 a month or whatever, pick your drug, pick your price, it's out of reach for many. So we mm -hmm. still have issues to work on there. Okay. Any chance we can get you to endorse a presidential candidate today? Nope. <laughs> Not even on April Fool's. <laughs> uh, worth a shot. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll be right back.